Spiritual Warfare is an action RPG for the Nintendo Entertainment System, released in 1992 by a company called Wisdom Tree. It's unique because it's explicitly Christian-themed and it's unlicensed. This means that the cartridge has a different design than usual. Nintendo did not approve of the game's sale, and they did not benefit from any licensing fees. It also means that Wisdom Tree had to add its own methods to bypass Nintendo's copy protection lockout technology. I first encountered the game as a kid. Growing up in a Christian household, my parents tolerated but didn't fully approve of video games, so when I spotted this game on the shelves of a Christian bookstore, I felt like I had struck gold. Here was something that they'd have to approve of. I didn't think they'd noticed my interest, but to my delight, I got the game for Christmas, and my older brother and I eagerly dug in and finished it together. I've attempted it a few times as an adult, but never gone all, gotten all the way through. So my memory of the early game is pretty good, but the late game is vague. It should be a lot of fun. As a last note, there's no agenda in highlighting this game, I promise you. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Christianity, and I'm definitely not trying to stealth evangelize to you, the viewer, either. Now, I personally am a Christian, a Mennonite in fact, but my goal here is just to take you all through a weird and funny little game with some nostalgia value for me and hopefully some entertainment value for you. In the course of that, if I say something ignorant or offensive or stupid, just please contact me and let's have a conversation about it. Okay, having said all that, let's get on with the game. So after that odd bit of business, which I can only assume is the game getting around Nintendo's lockout technology, we're unceremoniously dumped here at the menu screen. No intro, no backstory, no preamble about the pieces of the thing, dungeon, guys, bad dude, nothing. You just get play game, enter password, music on, and music test. Now a fun thing to note, um, it says copyright 1992, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo actually came out a year before this. And as you'll you'll see in the main game, uh, these guys are a little behind the times. But I respect the effort. Thanks, Nina, for the graphics. Sound test. Allows you to change the uh, speed of the music back and forth. But we're going to keep it on the regular canonical speed for now. And then we're asked for our name. As far as I know, this has no bearing on the game. It's just to... Uh, ordinarily, this would identify your save file, but not the case here. And with that, we're starting off in, as you see in the top middle of the screen, Park. We have three hearts of health, we have zero keys, we have zero of the vials, zero dove points, and it all looks pretty familiar, once again, to a certain Hyrulean legend of Zelda. Right down to a conspicuous uh, entrance on the first screen there. Picked up some sort of uh, vials there. Found three of them. And, um... This music just loops forever. The the actual, the entire soundtrack of the game is three hymns that loop continuously forever. So, we may turn that off. On the sub-screen here, you can see item select. That's a vial of God's wrath. It actually describes everything decently well. Uh, down the side, we have the different fruits of the spirit that we'll be collecting as our main weapons. Each one uh, has uh, represents a different uh, good quality and also has a different sort of attack pattern. As you pick up more of them, you're able to throw more and have more on the screen at once. Right side, you see we have the Armor of God pieces. That that's what we're collecting actually throughout the game. We're supposed to collect all, all the pieces of the armor. So we'll head into the first entrance here. It's dangerous to go... I mean, you found the pear! It's your first fruit of the spirit. Use the A button to throw it. There we are. Give that a little test there. So I can mash on the button all I like, but one is going to come out at once until I'm able to find more. We're told the pair represents meekness. Uh, I'm not sure how canonical that is, given that we don't really get a direct one-to-one -one mapping of fruits to qualities. There you can see I've used one of the vials of God's wrath. They act rather like bombs, um, and they are set off when you hit them with one of the fruit. Useful for blowing open bushes and trying to find secrets and things. Time to explore the park. We find our first enemies here. 
It's a bunch of bad looking dudes. Some bad dudes with knives going around the park. Let's throw a fruit there, and as you can see, it converts them, and you get a dove point. Dove points are used to uh, purchase supplies, um, all kinds of things. We'll see more of that as we go. Now, uh, funny thing happens. This one releases a demon that chases me around the screen until I vanquish it for five whole points. That's right, many of the uh, nasty characters you'll find around the game, as you saw there, do contain are possessed, I guess. And here we have our first angel, which brings us to the trivia round. This early in the game, pretty exciting. So answer and earn for five dove points. I believe Jesus said that God's word is truth. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, I think there. Each trivia round hits you with five questions in a row. And if you get all, if you get the first four right in a row, then you get an extra bonus on the fifth one. Uh, if not, I think the fifth one is just for five standard points. Fortunately, I'm gonna I'm gonna rock these early rounds. There are a surprising amount of questions built into the game, and some of the later ones, as I recall, are some pretty deep cuts. Uh, they get kind of obscure about the different churches that Paul visits and things. Uh, for now, it's uh, pretty straightforward though. So we're gonna continue to explore around the park. We find uh, some more of these knife wielding fellas wandering around here. Occasional, I'll, I'll cut to the sub screen just because I'm uh, making notes for myself. Uh, you can see the railroad tracks around the side. We have these guys. They're green. They're a little crazy. Maybe some of those bath salts or methamphetamines or something. But we're going to convert them all the same. And it's good to sort of poke around. I'm not very thorough, but it is good to poke around with the vials of God's wrath and uh, just see if we can find any secrets. There's a heart container. Again, reminiscent of a certain other series that we know and love. We'll have to wait until a little later on, until we get access to the train tracks before we can uh, go pick that thing up. But that will be increasing our maximum health by one. A little fountain there in the park. It's sort of a nice touch. Um, next time you see the map, uh, make note that the world is divided into several sort of distinct zones. Um, each sort of representing a different part of this uh, city that we're in. And it's our job to explore them all, find the pieces of the armor of God, and, uh, and then see what happens, I guess. Found seven vials under that bush. It's a nice little bonus. So as you can see, um, evangelism is pretty much about just going to the park or wherever in your city and just, just throwing fruit. I mean, it's hard to know if these are metaphorical or not. If you do, if you do it with meekness, in this case, then... Uh, Good to go. Um, here it says you need a train to ride the ticket. This is the, uh, rather, a ticket to ride the train. This is the game's fast travel system, which Zelda was lacking, so take that. Um, we're not going to be able to access it until much later. Oh, whoops, there's, I got too close to that uh, bottle wielding maniac. See, there you can see the uh, zones, different parts of the city. I'm periodically checking that just to, uh, again, to keep kind of tracking my notes. And just uh, know sort of where I am in relation to everything else. Some stairs going down under the uh, lake here in the park, and a little boy says, Hi, go down these stairs and look around. Once you find the belt of truth, you'll be able to leave the park. So I'm actually trapped here forever unless I, unless I go down under the lake. Very silent hill of you raft uh, there, sitting quite conspicuously in the middle of uh, things there. Pause to make some more notes before I head on. This little green child says, hello, if you'd like the raft, you'll need Samson's jawbone to retrieve it. Oh, nice. We live in a universe where Samson's jawbone is uh, still around. Cool. Rumor has it the jawbone is in a locked room in the shipyard. Writing that down. Make note for future reference. sitting there, looking all rafty. Got some more bottle maniacs here. And it's time for another trivia round! Alright, question six. Jesus told his disciples to preach the Gospels to every creature. The Bible says the Gospels power God for salvation. Apostle Paul was 
Not a shame. Oh man, I'm just I'm crushing it on these things here. I don't know if you saw it last time, but when I get to uh, question the tenth here, make note of my cool little bow tie there, which I presume. Uh, I like. I, I've always thought that that portrait in the upper right is what your character actually looks like, with the little buck teeth there and the, and the hair and stuff. That's. I'm. I'm pretty sure that's the guy, right? So, and he's got his little bow tie there. You can see sometimes when I'm facing downwards. So, that's us. And our bow tie spins around when we correctly demonstrate our knowledge of biblical trivia. Pretty exciting. Let's take a quick look. Uh, it looks like this goes to that staircase that was on the other side of the lake, and there's also a ladder going down through the fizziest lake ever. So we'll pop back to the other side. We're not quite ready to go down into the, uh, I guess you would call that a dungeon just yet. But we will. No worries. We know the belt is down there, so we have to eventually. We're just going to look around it a little bit more. Pairs with some more knife dudes. Uh, these trash cans are invulnerable to my vials, but I think I may be able to interact with them later. Got a little too close to that one. And here's a bicyclist. Doesn't seem particularly dangerous, but he's probably a sinner, so let's throw pears at him. I mean, if he's hanging out in a park full of these guys, then there's got to be something up, right? And he's a basketball dude. We can't get to him. Uh, as far as I know, we can't interact with him in any way. We can just watch him play. Here we go. Eh. Oh, 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 oh. So close. It's all about the follow through, bud. Second shot. No, not quite. Is that H or O? No, wait. You have to sink it. I don't remember. That's just kind of a, actually a nice little touch. Just a little basketball screen there. I hope he's not a sinner in need of my pairs of meekness. Um, little note about the praying hands there in the item select. Uh, you can actually pay 10 dove points to uh, regain uh, a little bit of health each time. So that's kind of a, kind of an option, just like real Christianity. So before we head down and try to find the belt, we're going to just poke around a few extra areas of the park here, make sure we're not missing anything crucial. Although, since I'm not obsessively bombing every bush that I come across, I'm probably missing quite a few things, but who knows. It's more probably just more dove points and refills on the vials. So on this screen, we have what appears to be um, the... Holocaust Memorial uh, in Berlin, so I guess this game is now taking place in Germany. Interesting. See how it plays out. There's a child over here hanging out by all the gangsters. Let's see what uh, this one has to say. Downtown lies east of here. You'll need the belt of truth to push this rock out of the way. Well, how, how does anyone leave this park? Is that why you've all turned so violent and ugly? Well, all right then. Having covered the overworld, it's time to head down into underneath the lake, where I find this old man in a tracksuit, climbing ladders forever. It's kind of horrific, and the more you think about it, again, really kind of a... just a creepy touch. There's just a whole bunch of ladders under the lake, and just old men climbing forever and ever. Some sort of an item over here. Let's go out of our way to check it out. As you can see, I'm always throwing uh, two pairs. This is anointing oil. It restores health. So basically, it's a, it's a health potion. It's just a health potion there. Anyway, I'm always throwing two pairs just because uh, you want to be ready to get any uh, demons that come out on the second pair. So when you're that close, when you have to be that close with, with the, uh, the short range of the pair, you just take a little extra precaution there. stored a bunch of kegs here, and I think they may be susceptible to getting vile. Nice. Wouldn't you know there's a secret? And inside, here's an apple to add to your collection of fruit. It travels slowly, but is very powerful. It will cost me 40 points. So now you can see one of the reasons we've been collecting these points this whole time. I now have one apple. It is a fruit of the spirit. That represents patience, and you will see why. Slow. 
Good range. Punches through enemies, which is nice. But uh, as I can only have one on screen at a time, that's, that's a lot of time in which I can't fire a second shot. So if I miss, that's unfortunate. We have some sort of a golden chamber deep down underneath the lake here that we're going to investigate in just a moment. Maybe this is a common uh, feature of cities. I've actually never been beneath uh, park lakes inside the chamber. A whole bunch of vials. Uh, so this says boss fight if I've ever played a video game before, and I have. Our boss is one of the green meth heads hiding behind a rock and throwing demons at me. It's uh, a bit odd, so I switched back to the pair for, uh, for a quick turnaround on my shots, and I tried to use the vials to trap him within the blast radius. Although, judging by the dove points these things are dropping, I should just farm here for a while. Now, I suppose I won't. Let's get, this, let's get this thing over with. It seemed like the fruit were bouncing ineffectively off the rock, so I wondered if I needed to use explosions to take him out. Very unpredictable pattern as it rips around the room there. Fortunately, the blast radius of the explosion will not hurt you, as it does in most other games. But it turns out the fruit were also effective, and I finished him off. Door opens. And we find the Belt of Truth, one of the six pieces of the Armor of God. With it, you can move obstacles. Well, I don't look a lot different, but as you can see on my Armor of God chart on the side, I do now have the Belt. So that went uh, pretty smoothly, I'd say. Now, on the way back out, I noticed on the right side of the screen sort of a, a variation in the tiles there. Not really sure what it means. Uh, tried to interact with it. Tried to bomb it a little bit. Um, maybe it's something I'll have to come back for. Also, I noticed that he has a super hilarious... You can make him climb extra fast. Sort of driving into the corner there. Anyway, top side, once again with my belt, I can now push these trash cans over to find the bonuses buried underneath. We've got a bigger mission. The rest of the city awaits. Tiptoeing past all the all the gang members here. I, I assume they're a gang. They're all wearing colors, like the same. And I can push this boulder aside and, oh, immediately prevent myself from leaving the area. <sighs> okay, all right. Well, the good news is going off screen and back on will reset the puzzle. And now this time, let's push the other block. There we go. And we find ourselves in downtown. A little sign there that points back to the park. And some businessmen running back and forth. Obviously in need of salvation. But this seems like a, as good a place as any to close off uh, this installment of Spiritual Warfare. So we're going to have to save uh, downtown for later. As I mentioned earlier, there's no different soundtrack for different areas in the game. It's all the same. So we're going to end the game and get our password. Uh, that's right. As I mentioned, there are no save files. There's only this extremely lengthy password that I will have to... Uh, well, I took a screenshot of it. And I'll have to laboriously enter this in next time in order to continue. Heaven forbid you mistake a, a zero for a capital O. And it's why to this day I still tend to draw lines through my zeros just to make sure that people get it right. Um... All right, well, thanks uh, Thanks for watching the first installment of Spiritual Warfare. We're going to pick it up next time. Leave a comment if you want me to keep the soundtrack off or on or double-time it, and we'll see you next mission.